If you have diabetes and your doctor has recommended cataract surgery, your first thought might be, will I see clearly again? But here's the surprising truth. Your blood sugar isn't the only factor that shapes your recovery. Blood sugar matters for safety and healing, but it doesn't fully predict how sharp your vision will be after cataract surgery. The health of your retina, along with careful planning, plays a much bigger role than most people realize. With modern surgical techniques and the right preparation, most diabetic patients do safely regain clearer vision, but outcomes depend on more than the operation itself. My name is Dr. John Legretta, and I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist. In this video, I'm going to cover five key areas, healing time, complication risk, blood sugar planning, lens choice, and coordinating your care that make the difference between frustration and success. And it all starts with an often overlooked part of the eye that decides whether your new clarity really lasts. Your retina matters more than you think. One of the most important factors that will shape your results is something people never think about, the retina. This thin layer at the back of your eye is what actually processes the light coming in and sends those images to your brain. While the cataract surgery clears away the cloudiness, the retina, especially the central part called the macula, ultimately decides whether the final picture you see is very sharp or still blurry. If the macula is swollen or damaged from diabetes, sharp vision after surgery becomes much harder to achieve. This is why eye surgeons take time to carefully examine the retina before ever scheduling cataract removal. A dilated eye exam can reveal changes from diabetic retinopathy, and an OCT scan gives a detailed view of the macula to check for swelling, known as macular edema. And research shows that these findings, the stage of retinopathy and whether macular edema is present, predict vision after surgery much more accurately than a single blood sugar number like a hemoglobin A1c. In fact, patients with advanced retinopathy or untreated macular edema often struggle to improve after cataract surgery, even when the operation itself goes smoothly. So I want you to imagine this in practice. A patient has what looks like a perfect lens replacement, but when the eye heals, their vision is still hazy. The problem wasn't the cataract lens completely. It was macular swelling that one untreated beforehand that was part of the culprit as well. This example reinforces why early detection and treatment of the retinal disease matters so much. By treating swelling with either injections, laser, or other therapies before surgery, the eye may be better prepared to heal after surgery and have the benefits of the new lens in the eye. So here's a takeaway you can use right now. When you sit down with your surgeon, ask two simple questions. Have you done an OCT to check my macula? Is the macula dry or do I need treatment first? If the macula is dry, that usually means surgery can move forward safely. If it is not, addressing the swelling first typically improves your chances of gaining clearer sight after the cataract is removed. And so understanding the retina's role helps you avoid surprises and gives you a clear way to prepare before surgery. With this foundation in place, the next piece to consider is just as critical. Decision about what kind of artificial lens goes into your eye after the cloudy one is removed. Not all artificial lenses are created equal, and for patients with diabetes, the decision goes far beyond simply swapping out a cloudy lens for a clear one. The type of interocular lens placed in your eye can shape not only how you see now, but also how manageable future eye treatments may be if diabetic complications develop later. When it comes to choices, one clear rule stands out. Surgeons are often cautious with multifocal lenses in patients with macular disease or significant diabetic retinopathy. These lenses are designed to reduce dependence on glasses by typically splitting light for near and distance vision. But one of the side effects is they can reduce contrast sensitivity. And that reduction can make everyday vision slightly less sharp, especially in dim light. And it may create added difficulty if you later need laser injections or retinal surgery. For someone even with mild macular changes, the trade-off usually isn't worth it. 
This is why many specialists recommend monofocal hydrophobic acrylic lenses as the safer standard for diabetic eyes. These lenses provide steady, reliable clarity and contrast. They also allow retina surgeons to perform future procedures without interference from the lens itself. Hydrophobic acrylic designs are typically more resistant to opacification and, unlike silicone options, they don't tend to interact negatively with silicone oil should that be used in vitreoretinal retinal surgery. In other words, they are more future-proof for patients who may eventually need more retinal care. The material of the lens matters as much as the design. Silicone lenses may be fine in patients without diabetes, but in diabetic patients, there is a real chance of future complications requiring vitreoretinal retinal surgery, and if silicone oil becomes necessary to stabilize the retina, it can stick to the silicone intraocular lens and cloud the vision permanently. Hydrophobic acrylic avoids this risk and remains the most widely recommended choice. Another practical but often overlooked detail is the optic size of the lens. Larger optics can make it easier for retina specialists to examine and treat the peripheral retina if procedures are needed later. For a patient, the difference is rarely noticed day to day, but for doctors treating diabetic complications years down the line, it can mean the difference between easy access and a frustrating limited view. So, when you're discussing lens options with your surgeon, focus on clear, practical questions. What IOL material will you use and why? Would a multifocal lens be safe for my current retina health? How large is the optic and will it allow a retina specialist to see the peripheral retina easily if I need treatment later? These simple prompts put you in control of your long-term vision and ensure decisions are made with future health in mind not just immediate clarity. Choosing the right lens today helps you secure better outcomes tomorrow. But lens selection is only one part of this bigger picture. Another major factor, how your body heals after surgery, often gets oversimplified into one idea, blood sugar readings. And here's where expectations and reality don't always line up. Why stable blood sugar isn't the whole story. Many people with diabetes assume their cataract surgery hinges mainly on blood sugar levels. It seems like common sense. If the glucose meter looks good on the day of surgery, everything should go smoothly. But the reality is more nuanced. Blood sugar control is important for surgical safety, helping to lower risks such as infection, slower wound healing, or anesthetic complications. Yet when it comes to the vision you regain, biggest factor isn't the number on that day. It's the condition of the retina itself. Good systemic control reduces surgical risk, but visual recovery still mostly depends on retinal health. This distinction often catches patients off guard. Long-term control does matter since persistently high sugars can worsen retinopathy and healing. But dropping your hemoglobin A1c rapidly right before surgery doesn't guarantee sharper vision if the retina already carries damage. In fact, studies and years of clinical experience confirm that rapid large drops in hemoglobin A1c, such as several percentage points over just a few months, can sometimes trigger a temporary worsening of diabetic retinopathy. This early worsening phenomenon means that sudden tight control isn't always safer for the retina in the short term. And patients sometimes push hard to improve numbers quickly, hoping for a smoother surgery. Imagine someone lowering their hemoglobin A1c dramatically to look ready, only to discover afterwards that macular edema worsened and required additional retinal treatments. But the effort wasn't wrong. The body adapts best to gradual, steady improvement. This is why eye specialists emphasize timing. It's not just about the lens removal, but also making sure that the retinal environment is stable before the operation. So what is the best approach? The safest plan is to work with your diabetes clinician well ahead of surgery to improve control gradually. At the same time, coordinate with your eye surgeon to assess whether the retina is ready. These two steps together help keep surgical risks low while protecting against unnecessary retinal strain. And think of it like adjusting gently on a slippery road. 
A steady hand provides stability, while sudden breaking can cause more problems. And here are two practical questions you can take directly to your doctors. With your diabetes doctor asked, is it safe to lower my hemoglobin A1C quickly right now, or should we aim for gradual control? And with your eye surgeon asked, given my retinal status, is it better to treat the retina first or go ahead with the cataract removal now? These focused conversations make sure your care plan balances both safety and lasting vision. And so your takeaway is very straightforward. Stable blood sugar control matters for healing, but it isn't the sole measure for success. Understanding this bigger picture is what sets the stage for long-term results that last well beyond the operation itself. So as I bring everything together today, let's be clear on the five key things every diabetic patient should remember before cataract surgery. First, your retina status and whether there's macular edema will decide how well you see afterward. Second, healing and recovery can take longer, so set realistic expectations. Third, diabetics face higher risk like macular edema, PCO, corneal healing problems, and infections, so close follow-up is essential. Fourth, blood sugar control should be steady and gradual, not suddenly drop right before surgery. Fifth, lens choice does matter. Most should stick with a monofocal hydrophobic acrylic lens and avoid multifocals if macular disease is present, but again, this decision needs to be discussed with your surgeon. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe for more clear eye health guidance. And if you're wondering what to ask your surgeon, drop your question in the comments. I'll try to answer the best I can. With modern surgery and good coordination between your eye and medical teams, many diabetic patients do achieve excellent vision. Planning is what makes a difference. See you in the next video.